Hi everyone and welcome back to another drawing demo. Okay, so today I'm going to be drawing this, this old archway. It's all kind of crumbling and really old. Um, so we've got some really nice textures going on with this. Lots of detail, lots of different tones. It's quite interesting. It's going to be quite challenging actually, but it'll be fun to do. Um, the paper I used for this one was the Daily Rowney Smooth Heavyweight paper. But I didn't work in my usual A4 format. I actually um, cut a piece in half and worked on an A5 piece. And as you can see, I use the grid method um, for the line drawing um, to get started. Um, also, um, over on my Patreon channel, there will be reference photos for this for you. There'll also be a line drawing there for you, um, all for you to download and copy if you want to. Um, and there's also going to be six other videos to accompany this one with just over five hours, I think about five and a half hours maybe, of real-time content with me talking all in real time. Um, so you can follow along with this one really easily if you want to. I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description below and there'll be a link in the end screen too. So if you want to pop along there and have a look at the rest of the demo, um, it'd be great to see you over there. We've got a fantastic community of people. They're all posting their own artwork there. Um, everybody's making friends over there. Um, it's really good. So I welcome you over there and it'd be great to see you there. Okay, so the rest of the materials that I used for this drawing were an HB pencil, a Dixon Ticonderoga, um, Pentel P200 with a 4B lead, and the Pentel Graph Gear 1000 with a 2B lead, two wood case pencils, a 2B and a 4B, a selection of erasers. I use the uh, Derwent Soft Art Eraser, a Koenor Pencil Eraser, and a little bit of blue tack uh, for a needable eraser, and of course a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. Where would we be without that? <laughs> It's a classic, that one, isn't it? Um, a selection of blending tools, soft paintbrush, cotton swab, tortillion, and paper blender. Also used a small set square and a dust brush. All the um, equipment that I use will be listed in the description below, so if you want to check out that, please feel free. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get started with the video. Right, okay, so I'm starting out with an HB pencil, just pressing very lightly, just in case I need to uh, erase any lines out or anything. Um, and I should probably say right at the very start as well, um, if you're one of these people that doesn't like blending and smudging, blending stumps, all that kind of stuff, you know, you don't agree with it, um, well, I wouldn't watch this video if I was you because there's plenty of it in here. Okay, it's it still mystifies me to this day why um, some people are against using blenders and those kind of techniques um, so if you are one of those people I'd love to hear a comment from you um, explaining why really I'm not trying to be awkward or confrontational or anything I genuinely would like to know why we shouldn't be using uh, blending stumps and things like that when we can get such lovely effects with them and the reason um, I actually bring this up is because I have just recently had a couple of comments actually about um, should we blend or shouldn't we blend um, and my answer is yes we should uh, why not you know um, so it's kind of prompted me to kind of ask that question why in fact shouldn't we um, be allowed to blend it does seem you know like it is a bit of a rule or a law or something like that um, and obviously you can probably tell by the way I'm talking, I'm totally against anything like that in drawing, you know, I believe anything goes. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear from you, you know, if you've got any logical, feasible reason as to why we shouldn't be uh, using blenders. So, like I say, you know, if you don't agree with it, I'd look away right about now, if I was you, um, because we're starting to get into the thick of it for the uh, texturing on the buildings. I'm actually just laying down a very rough foundation uh, graphite with the blender there just as an underdrawing to start the texturing process um, it's quite simple to do 
no skill involved with that you just kind of scribble it over the paper very easily done um, but it's like I say the layering part with the, um, the texture in that does get a little bit more complicated it's quite an unusual scene for me to draw this one actually I haven't done anything like this for quite a while um, so it's quite interesting to do a little bit challenging but it, it was fun to do and like I mentioned uh, right at the start of the video this video is just going to be an overview um, of the drawing you know it's not the full demonstration or anything the drawing actually took me uh, between seven and a half and eight hours to do um, so obviously this is condensed down into a 10 minute video so there's you know quite a bit missing um, but over on my patreon channel um, like I mentioned there's I think there's five no sorry six videos with um, about five and a half hours of real-time content um, so you don't really miss anything at all Now these wood case pencils that you see me using here, these kind of blue turquoise coloured um, pencils, um, they look a little bit like the Stedler Mars Lumograph, but in fact they're made by Rowney, not Daler and Rowney, just Rowney um, before the two companies merged together. Um, the vintage pencils, I've just managed to pick up two boxes of 12, um, one box of 4B, one box of 2B, um, and they are absolutely fantastic pencils, for the number now. But if you just remember the name, Rowney Victoria, um, if you ever see any, definitely buy them. I don't think you'll be disappointed. They're really good pencils. Okay, so back to the drawing then. You can see it's starting to take shape now. I'm getting some of the detail in there, some of the architecture. And I'm just using the HB pencil just to get a few mid-tones in there. There are a few tricky areas actually in this drawing. Um, some of the details there are quite tricky to draw but with the aid of the grid um, you know that makes it a whole lot easier for you you can get quite an accurate line drawing um, when working with the grid method something again you know I highly recommend particularly if you're not very good at line drawing um, you know you don't want to spend hours just freehand drawing and, and making lots of mistakes and erasing you know you can omit all of that um, just by putting a grid there on the piece of paper. I explain a lot more about the grid method um, and the merits of it, you know, again, over on Patreon. Um, a lot more information over there. But very basically, how I tackled this drawing was um, to start on the outer walls first and then inside the arch last. Um, and the plan of attack was to lay down several layers of graphite with the, the blender um, in various tones and then go in with various uh, pencil grades and erasers to start detailing the texture and refining that area a little bit. It was kind of the same process for these pillars and most of the stonework in fact uh, was kind of done using that process. So you can see again here you know I'm using the blender I mean what a fabulous tool this is. Um, I can't see any reason why we shouldn't be using them honestly I can't um, and I'd still love to know, you know, I'd love to hear from you if you've got you know, any reason whatsoever why we shouldn't be using them. So, back to the drawing, um, using the blender again to start laying down some of the lighter tones and the mid-tones. I keep recharging the blender um, on a scrap piece of paper which has got some graphite scribbled down on it. I just keep rubbing the blender in there and charging it up with graphite. Um, and it makes a fantastic drawing tool you know in its own right and then once that's laid down I go in with a 2B pencil and start detailing getting some of the discoloration in there um, some of the darker areas it's quite textured actually um, underneath these arches so I went over it several times in several layers just slowly building up the tones and the texture starting with the, the 2B pencil and then in a little while I moved on to the, um, the 4B pencil just to get the really dark darks in there. Now 4B doesn't sound very dark does it but um, the pentel leads are very dark you know you can sort of get kind of an 8B kind of lead grade with them um, you, you might need to press a little bit hard and you'll get a little bit of graphite shine but uh, it's not something that bothers me 
you know you can still get really fine detail with them you don't have to keep sharpening them um, and the tones they produce are absolutely gorgeous they really are you know if I was using a wood case pencil for this I'd be having to stop every five minutes to sharpen it you know because the lead is so soft so you can see the texture is building up nicely now and the tones are getting nice and strong there These are the pencils I was talking about earlier, the ones that look like the Stedler Mars Lumograph, um, but they are in fact, you know, the Rowney Victoria. Oh yes, one thing I forgot to mention as well. Um, if you do leave a comment, can I ask you not to put any links in those comments, any live links? Um, because what happens is, your comment won't get shown in the comment section, it'll automatically end up in the spam box. and it's going to eventually get deleted because I get so much spam um, you know people saying look at my channel or go to this website and that you know it's very spammy um, so I've set everything up so that anything with a live link just goes straight into the spam folder and then once a month I go there and just delete everything off um, so it's best if you don't put any live links there um, and also as well YouTube apparently doesn't like live links in the comment section it can affect your ratings um, so that's why I've actually set my settings now to put any comments with any live links straight into the spam box um, where they won't be shown okay so we're not too far off the end of the drawing now in fact um, just got a few refinements to do and a few more little details um, in this middle area just here and then we can call this one done um, I think I'll agree actually that using the blender and a combination of pencils and erasers over the top is quite a nice effect uh, for the texture on buildings. It kind of worked out very nicely in fact. I was, well I was quite pleased with the result anyway. You might be looking at it thinking oh no. <laughs> but yeah I thought it looked quite good actually. I was quite pleased with the results there. And it wasn't really difficult to do either. It was quite easy to do. In fact I'd say that a beginner could do this one um, if they could get the line drawing fairly accurate, which they should be able to with the grid method, um, but the shading part and the texturing is really quite easy. It didn't really cause many any problems whatsoever. It was fairly straightforward, in fact. So yeah, this would be a good one for you to have a go at. Um, just on the final stages now, just putting the the pathway in. A few nice little details here and there. there we go there's the finished drawing so remember check this one out on my patreon if you're interested in it and uh, it'd be great to see you there so thanks very much for watching take care everybody and i'll see you in the next one bye for now